Hi guys. Today I'm going to talk about FL Studio's plugin database and how you can configure it. Before I get started, let me point out that this video is not about installing plugins in the plugin manager. I'm assuming you already know how to do that. If you came here for information on how to install and scan plugins, click on the link in the description below and read the manual section instead. The FL Studio plugin database determines which plugins you can add to your project from the following places. The plugin picker. I won't show you the plugin picker in action because I have too many plugins and my plugin picker is a chaotic mess that looks a bit like this. Yuck. From the plugin database in the browser. The plugins listed in the add menu and the mixer slots. Note that if you've chosen the simple display mode, your plugins won't be categorized, but are just one big list. I much prefer the tree structure myself. Categories will display all plugins in one list, but grouped by category. The plugin database is actually nothing more than a series of folders and files on your hard disk. You can open the plugin database structure directly from the browser. Right click on the plugin database entry or one of the categories and select Open from the menu. Each entry in the plugin database consists of a few files. Let's take a look at the files in Windows Explorer. As you can see, we have an FST file. This is an FL Studio preset. When you select an entry in the plugin database, the plugin is opened with this preset loaded. This file must be present for the plugin to show up in the database. An image file. This is the preview image you see in either the browser or plugin picker. If you don't have an image file, you won't see an image preview of the plugin. If you don't care about the images, this file is not required. An info file that contains the image file name. Again, if you don't care about the images, this file isn't required. So let's take a look at how to add an entry to the plugin database before we look at how you can organize it. First of all, you need to locate the plugin you want to add to the database. There are a few ways to do this. Open the installed entry in the plugin database in your browser and locate the plugin. Press Ctrl F in the browser and enter the name of the plugin. Select Add More from the menu for instruments or click in a mixer slot and choose Select More Plugins from the menu there. Either way, you'll see a window that lists all installed plugins of that type, instrument or effect. You can type the name of the effect or the vendor in the Find field to easily find the plugin you are looking for. Adding a plugin to the database requires you to flag the plugin as one of your favorites. There's a few ways to do this, such as right click the entry in the plugin browser under Installed and choose Add to Plugin Database, flag it as favorite. Click on the little star icon in the name next to a plugin in the list of plugins. Now, personally, I don't like doing it this way because the plugin is automatically categorized if you do this. For example, if I mark Philharmonic as a favorite, it will automatically be added to the synth folder in my plugin database. But it's an orchestral plugin, so that's not where I want it to be. Instead, I'm going to load up the plugin from the list. Now, to choose where I want the plugin to show up, I'm going to open up the generators in the browser and open the category I want the plugin to be assigned to. In this case, I'm going to add it to the orchestral category under generators. I do this by opening up the orchestral entry in the browser and then selecting Add to Plugin Database Flag as Favorite from the wrapper menu. This will add the plugin to the database in the location I have opened in the browser. You'll see a little confirmation window pop up telling you where the plugin will be added. You can add the same plugin to more than one category by opening more than one category in the browser. For example, I could add Philharmonic to both orchestral and strings by opening both categories. Now, you might have noticed that my plugin database contains a whole bunch of categories that you don't have. So let's take a look at how you define your own categories and how you can clean up a ballooning plugin collection. Remember how I mentioned that the plugin database is really just a collection of files and folders? Well, let's open it up again in Windows Explorer. Right click on the plugin database entry in the browser and select Open. You'll notice that the three folders, Effects, Generators and Installed, all show up as entries in the browser in FL. If I open up the Generators folder, you can see a bunch of other folders. 
These are the same folders that appear in the browser and are used to categorize your plugins. If we open up the orchestral folder, we can see that there are files for Philharmonic in there. These are the files that were added when I marked the plugin as a favorite. Let's go back to the generators and add a new folder. For demo purposes, I'm going to call this folder temp so I remember to delete it again later. You'll presumably want to use something a bit more descriptive. As I add the folder, you can see that it also shows up in the browser in FL Studio. If I now select the entry in the browser and add the plugin to the database, you can see that it is added to the temp category. And if I open up the add menu, there it is as well. You'll have to believe me that it's also in the plugin picker. I can move the entry in the plugin database to a new category simply by copying the files in the temp folder to another location. Let's move the entries to the workstation category. And as you can see, the plugin is no longer available under temp, but is available under workstation. Let's clean up some of the mess and delete the temp folder again. Notice how deleting the folder has removed the category from the plugin database. So you can very easily customize your plugin database and add your own categories simply by adding new folders and moving the corresponding files to wherever you want them to show up. You might find that you need to reorganize your database as your plugin collection grows. You can remove entries from the database simply by deleting the files. If you find your plugin database is getting hard to navigate, I'd recommend removing those plugins you don't use that often. You can still add the plugins to your project. You'll just need to open the full list of plugins to do so, as I did to load Philharmonic the first time. The name of the entry in the plugin database is the same as the name of the preset file. That's the FST file. As this is the preset that is loaded when you select the entry, you can add the same plugin to the database multiple times with different names, and then selecting the entry will load that particular preset. You might want to do this if you regularly use a particular patch. Got a favorite Citrus base patch? Load it up, add the plugin to the database under base, and then rename the file to something better. One of the things to watch out for when you do this though, renaming the files will break the link between the preset file and the image file if you're not careful. You need to name the info file the same as the preset file, and you need to make sure that the contents of the info file references the right image. You can simply open up the info file in Notepad and edit the file name. Personally, I never use the images, so I don't care. That's why I've deleted so many of them. So, let's quickly recap. The plugin database determines which plugins are available in the plugin picker, the plugin menus, and the plugin database in the browser. You can use plugins that aren't in the plugin database. Use the plugin database to manage your frequently used plugins. You don't need to add every plugin you have, especially those you rarely use. The plugin database is really just a bunch of files and folders on your hard disk. You can edit the structure by moving around files and adding folders. Each entry consists of a mandatory preset file, an info file that needs to have the same name as the preset and tells the browser what image to display, and an image file referenced by the info file. For categories to show up in the add menu, you need to have either tree or categories view selected. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.